Hey guys, Paul here. So today I wanted to weigh in on the idea of pile decks and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing because it's been a really popular and sort of controversial topic in the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh community for the last week or so ever since a number of pile decks did really well at the remote YCS at the end of February. Um, before we get into this, by the way, if you guys notice my voice sounds a little bit off, it's because I'm just getting over a kind of bad case of the flu. Uh, it stopped me from making videos. I'm, I'm pretty much fine now, but just, you know, getting over it. Had to try to get back to making videos, so don't worry. Um, now, the decks that have been winning recently have been an amalgamation of engines that people often will call a pile deck. To better define that, I guess I would say that pile decks are... It's kind of like what it sounds like. It's a pile of cards. Well, you're like, okay, duh, that's what a deck is. But it doesn't really adhere to like a certain archetype. It's usually just a collection of good cards. Some people will call this like a good stuff deck. So basically you'll find like lots of different engines and lots of different one-off tech cards, lots of just like sort of powerful combos and pieces that all work together to sort of become stronger than the sum of their parts. Uh, an example from recently is this deck that some people call based. Um, I'm not even going to get into why it's called that. It's an acronym. Who knows what it stands for. But just looking at this deck list here, um, I mean, I see hand traps. I see um, this Rose Dragon engine. I see Magician Souls. I see Punk cards. I see Hoppier Squadron and Fairy Tail uh, Snow. And I see like Tinyi monsters. And I see the Brave engine. And it's you know, e-tellies and just everything else. And so, you know, that I think is a good way to sort of like illustrate what this is. It's just a lot of the best engines and cards of the game currently put into one. Um, why do people like these so much then? And why do people maybe not? We'll get into that in a second. So I think that <clears throat> some of the pros of a pile deck like this is that you kind of get to play in a very a non-constricted way. Archetypes can be really strong, and we've seen very powerful ones, but at the end of the day, archetypes are always sort of controlled by Konami. Konami's hand will always control how powerful an archetype can really be just by their own design. I mean, sometimes people will break archetypes, and sure, there's plenty of hybrid decks with archetypes that end up being a lot better than maybe Konami originally intended for them to be. But ultimately, there's just sort of a limit on what you can do with these, especially because many cards today are limited to hard ones for turns, and like archetypes will often sort of lock themselves into certain things. But with pile decks, you're usually just using very lean, small engines that maybe get you to a quick Xyz monster, a quick Link monster, a quick Synchro monster, whatever the case might be. Some examples of pile decks just throughout history, I think a pretty notable one would be the 2011 Plant Synchro deck. This is one that just used a lot of good tuner monsters and good just sort of like self-replicating monsters like Reborn Tengu or Tour Guide and good staple cards. An even older example would probably be a GOAT format. That's a really popular one. It's just a lot of one-off, some two-off sort of cards that do good things individually and when played well can be greater than the sum of their parts. It's not really tied or attributed to a specific archetype. It's just kind of what it is. Um, and I'd say that if you want a really recent example, uh, besides just, you know, what's been doing well now, I would actually say the Dragon Link makes a great case study here. Because uh, while there's certainly, you know, some DNA of specific archetypes here and there within it, it's largely just a lot of different dragon monsters that all happen to have good synergies with each other. And so they can make some really powerful boards, combos, plays, and strategies that are kind of not intended to be perhaps even as strong as they are, but you get a lot of creativity and you get a lot of freedom of expression with these decks because you're not just limited to what Konami's design is, you're just sort of like limited to your own creativity and perhaps even your own skill as a player. A lot of people like these decks because they feel that the skill ceiling on them is extremely high. And that's um, also complemented by usually a very high power ceiling to match. <clears throat> so with that in mind then, what are some of the downsides to a sort of pile deck like this? And why do people seem so upset about it? Well, um, I think that people's biggest issues are kind of that these pile decks are a mirror of 
what the worst parts of the format are, some of the most obnoxious little combos. The biggest one right now being Artifact Scythe. A lot of people do not like this card. Um, it's been around in the game for years, really, and it's had kind of on and off competitive uh, attention, mostly through Artifact Sanctum, which, you know, you can flip it, summon Scythe in your opponent's turn, and then like they can't special summon from the extra deck. So it was always like a pretty decent main deck tech and a pretty strong side deck thing. Now, though, it's a little different because thanks to Artifact Dagda and uh, Christian Hawk Fibrax and a number of sort of, uh, we'll say, cards that are also guilty by association, it's easy to search for and like get Scythe off through a combo and like not even have to worry about drawing the trap. I mean, these decks don't run Artifact Sanctum anymore. You can run a single copy of Scythe, search it, set it, and like trigger it all on your own and um, lock your opponent out. And this is in addition to everything else that this deck can do. Another thing that people don't like is the Adventure Token Engine, or some people will call it the Brave Engine, but it's really Adventure Token, I guess, in the TCG. So it's another really strong engine. It's new. Um, it makes, you know, Wandering Griffin Rider, which is the pretty easy, free Omni Negate, and it also synergizes well with Certain other strategies, um, some people will like throw in a bit of a Phantom Knight thing in here, uh, some people will throw in other stuff. It's a pretty consistent engine, it's very low commitment, it, does, it plays nice with most strategies. Um, we've seen, you know, like the Adventure Token Prank Kids deck and Adventure Token Phantom Knights, like I said, and there's like plenty of other examples. It's ironic, really, the only thing it doesn't work particularly well with is like Alistair, because he's got a normal summon effect. It's a little bit of irony there, but... Um, yeah, so this is all true stuff. Like, some of these cards can be really obnoxious. I, for one, don't like Artifact Scythe very much myself. I think that it was always a pretty strong card, but the fact that it's now able to be searched and triggered completely independently of even Sanctum, to me, is rough, and I, I don't like it. But I still think that, overall, I'm a big fan of these sorts of decks. I think that they are without trying to sound too dramatic here, sort of indicative of like the pinnacle of Yu-Gi-Oh deck building because it's a player made thing and players kind of come together and form these decks. And to me, that's kind of what's at the heart of Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Like, you know, taking the best cards that you can find and making the strongest decks that you can and finding ways to express yourself within those decks. Because one of the nice parts about like these sort of pile decks is that they never feel like they're complete. They never feel like they're like sort of figured out entirely, and they don't always feel as though it's like a predictable affair. They can be really difficult to play against because you just don't know what's coming next. You don't know what engine someone chose to run or not run in their given version of the pile deck of the day, and that makes it you know hard to play against. And as, as a player who's using it, it's also very fun and challenging to see how you're able to play around what your opponent can do. Like oftentimes these decks can be really great at playing through a number of different hand traps because one Ash or one Ghost Bell or one whatever isn't necessarily gonna be enough to stop a deck like this when it's got several different lines of play that it can take. Now, does that make it overly powerful? Um, not necessarily, I mean, these decks aren't always like the top decks and this, this might even be like just a temporary trend. I will say, though, that Konami oftentimes has to hit them a little bit harder on ban lists, or they might take longer to get hit, because like we saw with things like Dragon Link, that's a deck that managed to constantly adapt throughout getting hit on ban lists multiple times, and even now is still a serviceable strategy. And that's like after LP's gotten, you know, like banned, and like Striker Dragon's gotten limited, and these sorts of things, we still have, you know, variants of Dragon Link that are totally playable. So, you know, will Konami hit this? It's likely. I say that because Konami does seem like they don't love these player-made decks. I think that the hyper power ceiling on them is something that Konami is not too fond of. I think they want to retain a lot of control over, like, what's good, what's bad. Um, but players in general seem to enjoy it. Now, um, crazy acronym names aside, I also am a fan of these decks. I think they're a fun exercise to build and play, and also a very fun exercise to play against, and they represent the spirit of Yu-Gi-Oh pretty well. However, I'd like to hear what you guys think down in the comments. What do you feel, like, what are your thoughts and feelings around these pile decks? Do you think that they're too good? Do you think that they're just kind of overblown? How should they be hit? What is your experience with them? 
I'd love to know all of that. Um, and yeah, so just sound off down there. I'll be reading it as always. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Past turn.